Hey, welcome back. Today we're talking about the top three most overpowered professions in Wrath of the Lich King. Now, one of the most powerful professions in Wrath of the Lich King is engineering. Engineering is like a machine gun compared to leatherworking, which is like a crossbow. They both can help you, but one is going to help you a lot more than the other. Now, I got some props here in case you don't know which is which. So a crossbow will help in one way, a single bolt, but a machine gun has tons of bullets firing rapidly. Engineering is that machine gun, and we're going to go through all the benefits that it gives you. Now, engineering in Wrath is a lot like engineering in Vanilla. It is simply the strongest profession. Engineering in Wrath has so many powerful items that enhance your character in both PvP and PvE situations. You're basically at a disadvantage if you aren't an engineer in Wrath. There's a new type of enchanting, so to speak, that engineers get called tinkers to your items, which like are enchantments, but they don't stack with enchantments, so keep that in mind. Now, this is an amazing change. Because in the past, if you wanted to use a fun engineering item, like a mind control cap or something, like you had to sacrifice the stats of your best in slot item. But now in Wrath, you can attach a fun engineering tinker to your best in slot item and keep those stats. Now, one of my absolute favorite new passives for engineering in Wrath is called Big Dick Energy. This grants engineers an increased effect when using runic mana injectors and runic healing injectors. If you're playing a mana thirsty class, using and these runic mana injectors as an engineer can be a great reason to go engineering. Just remember that every time you get that extra mana or extra health for the, <laughs> from those injectors, it's because of big dick energy. There's also fun things like the mind amplification dish, also known as the big brain dish, which is a tinker to your helm. This allows you to take control of smooth brain plebs on use and they become like a pet following you around. You can have them attack stuff. This is actually really cool. To grief someone, you go to the enemy capital city, you know, use this on them. Now you're, you're they're they're your pet, and you just tell them to attack someone. The guards will zerg them down and kill them. It's hilarious. Now it's important to note that the engineering head tinker grants 45 stamina aside from the mind control, and this is actually the highest stamina helm enchant in Wrath of the Lich King. So if you're a tank, there's an extra bonus there. The hand-mounted pyro rocket is best in slot for PvP, offering a 45 second 2,000 fire damage attack, often used as an additional burst to get a kill in arena since it's not on the global cooldown, so you can just macro it into some type of execute macro. There's also the hyper speed accelerators. This is a glove tinker, which increases your haste by 340 for 12 seconds on a minute cooldown. So that's actually pretty short. And since it is a glove tinker, once again, you can't have another enchant or tinker on it. So you have to pick up this or the pyro rocket, for example, not both. This is best in slot for PVE for tons of classes. And the pyro rocket is best in slot for PVP which is more for burst damage and it does less damage overall in PvE because the hyperspeed accelerator is going to stack with your, your gear as you get stronger. That haste is just going to scale better, if that makes sense. Now, another awesome tinker in Wrath is the Frag Belt. This one I love. Who doesn't love throwing bombs, but the, the hardest part is like spending the money to get them, right? Well, the freaking frag belt attaches as a tinker to your belt. It allows you to throw a cobalt frag bomb every six minutes. The frag bomb does 1,000 fire damage in an AoE and incapacitates for three seconds in a three yard radius. This is great for AoE fights, helpful in PvP scenarios, and best of all, you don't have to go reload it. It's just on cooldown. You basically have infinite frag bombs. It's awesome. Now, one of my personal favorites is the Nitro Boosts. This is another engineering-only tinker, and this time it's for your boots. It grants 24 crit rating, and on, on activation, grants a large run speed increase for 5 seconds. Now, keep in mind, Nitro Boosts can fail to work, and instead, they have a chance to launch you upwards incredibly fast and at a very high distance. If you have any form of slow fall, a survival cooldown, or maybe if you land in water, you'll be fine. But if you don't, you will likely die. Don't think about it. Just, just use the boots. You'll be fine. Now, these boots are paired nicely with the Flex Weave Underlay Tinker. This is for your cloak. And basically, instead of having a really weak parachute cloak, you know, something from Skedis has no stats, you can now attach the Flex Weave Underlay to your stat-filled cloak. It will increase your agility 
by 23 or spell power depending on which version you decide to make and it allows you to slow fall for 30 full seconds with only a minute cooldown very helpful in many situations especially if your uh, boots malfunction and otherwise would kill you now there's also a tinkler for gloves which is often overlooked it's for tanks it's called the reticulated armor webbing which grants 885 armor this is a very very nice uh tinker for tanks so once again engineering and tanks it goes well together another awesome thing that engineers have is jeeves the gentleman robot butler which engineers can craft and summon which grants bank access to the engineer and serves as a vendor with repairs for everyone else now engineering is also the only profession which has access to an auction house in Dalaran inside the engineering building there is a robot called brass bolt mecha wrench which acts as a steam powered auctioneer for engineers all other professions however will need to go to a different major city in order to access the auction house this could be a selling point for you to get engineering but many people just mail their stuff to their bank alt to auction that's me I don't know engineers can also make the mechano hog if you're a horde or it's also called the mech engineers chopper if you're alliance it's a two-person mount uh ground epic mount and you can chauffeur people around in it uh the mount is boe and not exclusive to engineers but it could be uh another way to make some gold as an engineer there's also the portable mailbox you can create called moly the mobile oversized letter and literary extractor this can be used every two hours and can be convenient if you are out in the open world expecting mail and there's no mailbox anymore Anywhere. or if you want to attempt to attract a night elf to dance on top of it you can also attempt that and if that night elf isn't the gold shire in type then you can get what you came for another way with the gnomish x-ray specs which allow you to see players without their clothing and armor and if night elves aren't your type there's always the critter enlarger which enlarges a critter to twice its normal size so it might actually be uh, acceptable to you <laughs> once the guards catch on to what you're up to you can make your quick escape with the new wormhole generator northrend although <laughs> you might want to put your clothes back on before you go i heard it's cold in northrend the wormhole generator can actually transport you to the location of your choice in northrend there's a list of options there's also a somewhat secret area with a somewhat secret vendor with rare recipes you can purchase as an option when you do choose that option there's no way out of there though so you will need either hearthstone or uh, getting summoned out to escape there now the wormhole uh, in the portable mailbox are actually not bind on use so you can trade them to other grandmaster engineers and then they can use it uh, however you please so that's a, a good little note also gnomish engineers can create ice blade arrows that are best in slot for hunters and sell for a ton of gold because they need so many of them so very very uh, good bonus there for gnomish engineers engineering also allows you to create goggles and trinkets which really not which have really nice stats and so it's really nice if you're, you're fresh 80 and you're trying to gear up engineering can be very helpful but if engineering is the best then what is the second best profession you might ask well that is none other than jewel crafting jewel crafting is the second best profession because no other profession grants as much raw stats as jewel crafting like in tbc there's three new qualities of gens gems you got the green uncommon which are pretty common actually you got the blue rare which sell for you know quite a bit of coin and you got the purple epic gems which like in tbc were not added on release but in patch 3.2.0 and are the best in slot items and accordingly the most expensive like cooking in order to get recipes you will need to collect tokens from jewel crafting daily quests to, in order to purchase those jewel crafting designs these tokens are called dalaran jewel crafters token it's actually really important to do your daily quest because the only way to get these recipes is to exchange those dalaran jewel crafters tokens to purchase them there's a really cool new addition in Wrath called the Nightmare Tier, which matches any socket, whether that's blue or red or yellow, and adds plus 10 to all stats. Most serious players are going to want at least one for their best in slot gear. You can actually only have one because it's unique equipped, which means you can only equip one. And usually they use it to take the slot of a blue socket because that socket typically is used for like half stamina and half the stat the player actually wants. And now there's also new ore in Northrend and so there's going to be some new prospecting opportunities, uh, titanium ore, even though it is uncommon, green quality, right? It actually can be prospected in addition to the cobalt and sarenite ores. 
prospecting titanium ore has an added bonus though. This is really important. The titanium powder that you get from prospecting can be exchanged in the stacks of 10 for a single dollar on Jewel Crafters token, which again, those are what you exchange in order to get the recipes uh, to do Jewel Crafting designs in dollar on. So it's an alternative to grinding dailies, which is time gated if you get enough titanium ore, making that super va valuable ore. Now the Jewel Crafting specific bonus Exactly the same as in TBC, you've got jewel crafting only gems, which are a step above anything other players can get. These gems are better by a factor slightly above what other profession bonuses give in terms of raw stats. However, it is worth noting that the bonuses from most professions come in terms of spell power or attack power, but with jewel crafting only gems, you get to choose the raw stat you want, like agility, which doesn't just give you attack power, but it gives you increased chance to dodge, critical strike rating, and that attack power, which is better than just the attack power alone, for example, for some classes. This is an often overlooked advantage to, and to jewel crafting, and many min-maxers will argue jewel crafting is the second best profession in the game right behind engineering. When it comes to making gold, jewel crafting is great, with the increased exclusivity of the designs gated behind those dollar on tokens. If you have a design that not a lot of other people have, you can make some serious gold. That and with prospecting or for gems, you can prospect your way to tons of gold using a process known as the Saranite Shuffle. This is actually just a fancy name for buying or mining Saranite or prospecting it and then either cutting the gems and selling them or using them to craft an item you can disenchant. But if you're an alchemist, you can also transmute those uncommon gems into a meta gem, which you can then cut. And so that is a huge opportunity to to profit if you are both a jewel crafter and an alchemist. Of course, the profits made from the Saranite Shuffle uh, will vary depending on your server's prices, but a very common technique jewel crafters use to make a bunch of gold. Jewel crafting also allows you to create rings, necklaces, and trinkets, which are all nice for gearing up, especially as a fresh 80. Now the third, final, best profession in Wrath of the Lich King is the only other profession that can even be listed along with these other two, and it is an incredible profession, and it is tailoring and that is because of the insanely powerful cloak embroideries which can proc for massive amounts of spell power attack power getting some mana back whatever you need it is there in the hands of a skilled player tailoring can compete with the other professions in terms of bonuses tailoring and wrath has a lot of similarities to tailoring in tbc and vanilla it doesn't require a gathering profession because you get cloth from hum humanoids without one it has valuable cloths on cooldown which you can use to make other valuable items. But there are also new, brand new additions to Tailoring and Wrath. You know, the passive is not big dick energy, unfortunately. Instead, it is Northern Cloth Scavenging. This grants tailors the passive ability to find additional cloth on Northern humanoids. This is called small dick energy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Cloth usually doesn't sell for a whole lot. But as a tailor, this can be very helpful to make additional bolts of frost weave, which are then used to make a lot of items, including the bolt of imbued frost weave, which can be used to make epic items, frost weave bags. And there's also three new types of those specialty tailoring cloths, all on a four day cooldown, just like in TBC. It's called moon shroud, spell weave, and ebon weave. Now, in order to make spell weave, you need two bolts of imbued, imbued frost weave, two eternal fire, which is basically the Wrath of Lich King version version of primals and you got to be at this place called the azure dragon shrine which is in dragon blight for ebon weave same thing but eternal shadow and in the maw of naltharian in dragon blight for moon shroud same thing but two eternal life and at the emerald dragon shrine in dragon blight the point i'm trying to make here is that it's basically less eternals needed than primals in tbc where you need like two or three different primals to make the cloth and in TBC, you had to go to like Netherstorm, then down to Shadowmoon Valley, and like all over the place. Now it's all in Dragon Blight, which is really nice, really easy to go to all those three different places and get your cloths made all super easy. So you can bet, though, with all the reagents behind the cooldowns, you know, of these cloths, this is going to generate you some nice gold as tailoring. So it's it's a really nice profession. You can also make those embroideries I was talking about. The names of those embroideries 
Uh, one of them is called Sword Guard Embroidery. Gives you a chance on melee ranged hit to increase attack power by 400 for 15 seconds. The Dark Glow Embroidery gives a chance on spell class to restore 400 mana. And then the Light Weave Embroidery grant, grants, grants a chance on spell cast to increase spell power by 295 for 15 seconds. All of these have a 60 second internal cooldown. These are the three embroideries. So as you can tell, there's really not one for a tank. So if that's you, tailoring is probably not a good fit. But for healers and damage dealers, these procs can be really powerful. Even in PvP, if you're looking for some big burst damage, it's worth notice mentioning that these procs are far more powerful than what any other profession can offer in terms of stat bonuses, even though it's temporary. And this is why some argue that tailoring is actually the second best profession behind engineering and wrath for DPS. Because of the random occurrences of these stat bonuses though, I can see how sometimes it might be stronger than the other professions if you stack other cooldowns when you get the proc, but it could also be very unlucky uh, like with the timings of your procs and it's kind of, in, you know, the consistent stats of jewel crafting could be much better because it's more consistent. So if you like to roll the dice with your chances, tailoring might be the second best profession for you if you are min-maxing. Um, on a less serious note though, tailorings can uh, learn to craft a new rug <laughs> this rug is not just any rug though it's actually a magnificent flying carpet which is an epic flying mount only available for tailors it's actually pretty iconic you know the flying carpet in wrath you know it's kind of a thing if you go, if you go tailoring you should look into getting it because it looks cool and it's only available for tailors and i actually feel like i need to do a fourth profession here to be totally fair i wanted to include alchemy now, I know I said top three, but alchemy is a really great profession in Wrath, and I don't want to leave it out. I mean, all of them are pretty good, but, you know, especially if you're raiding each week, having a one-hour increased duration on your flasks, access to alchemy-only professions that, actually, alchemy-only potions that are really strong for getting your mana back, along with increased effects from flasks, alchemy is really strong. And if you're into PvP, there's also a flask that never runs out called the Flask of the North, which can be used in PvP, right? You can use that increased stats in the arena and battleground. It's really awesome. There's infinite mana potions, infinite healing potions. Alchemy got super buffed in Wrath. It's a very strong profession as well. But knowing which profession to choose is worthless unless you've decided which class to play. So check out the video above my head and check out this comprehensive class picking guide, which will help you you make your decision on which class to play in Wrath of the Lich King. I will see you there.